In this video, I'm going to show you how to get good quality results while trying to do photorealism engraving on wood. So let's dive right in. So let's go ahead and open up an image in Lightburn. Um, I have this image I'm going to use right here to show as an example, and I'm going to show you two right off the bat to show you side-by-side -side comparisons. This first one here, I'm going to change it to the dither setting. Um, we're going to do it kind of low and slow, uh, high DPI, so let's try it at 150 millimeters a second with 10% power at 400 dpi and then for the second example let's duplicate that and we'll leave it on the same dither setting uh, but let's do it at 200 millimeters a second a little bit faster uh, with 15% power and see how that goes side by side So let's go ahead and load the material. In this video, I'm gonna use uh, three millimeter Baltic birch wood. Baltic birch is uh, fairly kind of like a white wood. It has a good contrast once it's engraved. Uh, so it's really excellent choice to do for photo engravings. Um, it's really important that you lay that wood flat so that way you have consistent results. Um, and you know, once it's ready to go, go ahead and start burning it and we can see what those two examples Will look like all right now that we have these wrapped up let's take a closer look here let's get it out of the machine and onto the table uh, the top one is our low and slow burn that's at 400 dpi 10 percent power 150 millimeters a second um, it actually is a pretty good result the bottom one here you kind of see a little bit of banding going on um, it's kind of when you get those lines that overlap on the engraving and I'm not really thrilled on it, but you know, let's still take a closer look and see what we can learn from these settings. Um, the thing that I noticed consistent on both ends, and it's pretty common in photo engraving, is getting a good contrast. Uh, one way to get good contrast after your engraving is to use a sanding sponge. You'll notice right there, I just kind of took out uh, some of the details, the lace that's inside the skirt by sanding it, you could actually bring those out and make them shine a little bit brighter. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way too would be to change the settings prior to engraving. So the next one uh, that we load up, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I want to change the contrast now to get a little bit more realistic results here. So we're going to get rid of our second duplicate um, and then we're going to click on the image here and mess with some of the image property settings. So by changing our contrast a little bit, it should make the darkers darker and the lighters lighter. Um, the gamma, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit darker too, so it's just darker all around. And then we're also going to use the enhanced radius. I um, mean, what that does is kind of sharpens up the image a little bit and makes, you know, some of the edges a little more lively when engraving. So. Um, we're just going to go ahead and place that here on our substrate and try this over again and see if we get uh, some better results, hopefully. For the settings, it's pretty much the same as our first one at 150 millimeters a second, except for I'm going to do it at 11% power this time uh, with 400 dpi. So now that it's all finished up, let's take a quick look here. Um, there is a little bit of banding, but what I did notice off the bat is it is darker for sure. There's better contrast with this one. Um, so let's take it out of the machine and take a closer look here. In comparison, uh, here are the three that I've done. The bottom one being the newest, uh, you'll see it does have a much better contrast. So we're definitely making great progress. Um, you'll see that you could actually see more visible details without having to sand it. Um, and um, I think what we can do is actually get our fourth one to be perfect. So using the things that worked from the third one, I'm going to make some final edits to this fourth piece here. Um, what I want to do is actually slow it down and reduce the power because we're reducing the speed. Um, we're also going to bring down the DPI a little bit to help with the banding. So let's change that to 360 DPI. And then the last thing I want to do is actually brighten it a little bit. I think um, by s slowing it down and then also just reducing the power a little bit, it'll still be a darker burn. 
Um, that being said, we don't want to put too much DPI on it. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to end up way too dark. So let's take a look and see what happens. So right off the bat, we could tell it's definitely dark due to uh, how much slower we did it this time at 100 millimeters a second. Um, but I mean, it does look excellent. There's no banding this time. Um, you know, you can see the details on the skirt. There's definitely more contrast. It's not as dark as our third one, but it does have no banding and it's just a better overall composed piece. So um, I think we've learned through these three steps how to make our fourth perfect and, uh, and, and really just dial in those photorealistic settings. So to summarize what we've learned through these attempts is that low and slow is kind of the best way to get the best results for photo engraving. Uh, you'll see with this one, it was at 100 millimeters a second with 10% power at 360 DPI. It did take a bit longer than the rest of the other pieces, but I mean, it was worth it. It was definitely much better quality and in the end, worth the wait.